uh, and reinforcing this garage roof. I'm going to put another beam between each one of these, 6 inch timber, and then I'm doubling these up to make them thicker. It's only for storage, and then there's chipboard flooring going on top. But, because we're adding all this extra weight, this beam's strong enough for what it's doing, but not strong enough really to add all this extra weight on top of it. So what I'm doing is putting a stud wall here. At some point, it's going to get extended all the way around. Then this part is going to get made into a gym. Doors put into there, into the garden. So what I've done is measuring off this wall. Put a mark there. And I've put a laser. There's a mark up there. Mark down there. There's one on the floor down there. What I've done is put two timbers on the floor. I can measure up then how long that is. So these are the two timbers that I put on the floor. That's the piece that I measured. Up to the top of that wall plate there is the same height as this beam, so I'm just going to run a timber straight through there. But now I can stand that up in place. Fix it around. We're only bringing the wall out to about here for now. And then I'm going to put three timbers in there to create a post. That'll support that beam a little bit more. I've just put a couple of screws in to hold it in place but now I can get a few more fixings in around Uh, this floor's quite dry, so I'd be tempted to put a visqueen under a damp course membrane. Like I say, it's very dry. So now I'm going to measure between that one and that one, cut it slightly bigger, and knock it in with hammer. And I'm putting three in there. I was going to use my level, my laser, I was going to use my laser, but I can't really get it in. With a laser you can just mark the top and bottom, and it doesn't matter if your timber's got a bend in it. Like I say, I can't really get it in, so level will do.
I'll do the same at the top here. When you try to line these up, try hitting it right on the joint, not on the wood, but right on the joint, and it'll come to a stop when your hammer hits that piece. So imagine that's out, that's flush now. All that needs now, at some later date, some more studs putting in and boarding. It could of course make the frame, put all the studs in, stand it up. That would only work if your floor and roof were parallel, which this isn't. So it's easier to put a main frame around and then put your studs in afterwards. Right, so that's now supporting that timber. That beam's been reduced by a third, the span of it's reduced by a third. I can get on with these now. That beam's, that timber's coming out, it's just tying all these together. It's 3B2 just getting screwed on top of these. There's enough going into the walls and onto the wall plate. Just double them up. And then like I said, there's some 6B2s out there. They're going to get hangers on this end. And then sitting on the wall plate on that end. Alright, that timber came out. It was just nailed to these. Like I say, it wasn't fixed at either end, it was just tying them together. I've cut a little block with that angle on, with the picture of the roof on it. So what I can do now is measure from there, across there. So that, plus that, is the length of my timber. My chop saw won't chop that far, so I'm just doing it with jigsaw. Right, now that's up there, put a couple of clamps on it and fix it together with coach screws, probably from underneath or on top, don't know, I haven't decided yet. And then there'll be another 6p2 going in between here. I wouldn't do this in somebody's house, but this is just loft storage for up there, It'll be more than fine. flush and it won't stick up for the boards that are going to go on top of it. That's already quite stiff. I'll get another one, two, three, four and fix that into the rafter. Uh, these timbers that I'm using, they're C16, the stress tested. It's called Easy Edge this stuff and it finishes at 145. This stuff's called Scant just cheap timber framing finishes at 70 mil I'm using this one you can get another one called CLS that's, that's even smaller that's got rounded edges I'm using this one because it finishes with those two at 145 
so these will be approximately the same as those big ones that I'll be putting in between here so the ceiling height and the floor height should be about the same level and in there I've got one two three four five and I've fixed it at this end and it's fairly strong now oh, that's two in I had to put a screw through this one so it's not up against the joist there up against the roof rafter you could stiffen these further by putting ply on either side and I don't think drilling down through them is the best idea but I haven't put many in Timber works a little bit like an I-beam that part you don't really want to be chopping into these pieces on either side are safe that's why you should always drill your pipes through the middle not top or bottom so drilling straight down through that bit mm, it's okay because I've left these two side pieces right, I just thought I'd show you this as well this is the center piece that was down the garage see the old timber see how tight the grain is this is the new stuff really wide grain that's why it shrinks so much cut it with the full depth here my blade's a little worn but it's okay so let's put the card around like that It's got like little lumps that are wedging it in. It's quite well in, is that? Looks a bit crooked, but so is the brickwork. You sight it through, it's it's sort of level. It'll do. Those four are in. I need to get one in there. This timber supporting the garage. It was a, attached to a piece that went across like that, but I've just propped it up for now. I'll need to redo that when it comes to it. But now I can get these timbers in, these big timbers. So I've got my timber in there, my little off cut. So I can measure from there over to there again. Add that bit on and cut them. So that's one in three more to go and I'll get some nails in here later on and get that screwed in place over there I 
Uh, that one's got a big split in it, running right the way along. It's just as well because that one's coming out. I'll put another one in here. And I'm going to put another one across there to create a hatch. And then just one down the middle. I've got another 6x2. So I'll just put that down the middle. In a house you'd double these outside ones up. They're the trimming joists. Then the one going across would be the trim joist. That would be doubled up. And then this one's just be a single joist. But seeing as it's just a loft space, it's starting to get to this end and it's only supporting one. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna put one single joist on either side and put that piece across, like I say. Uh, this is a strap shot nailer, metal connecting nailer, puts these square twist nails in, well worth the money, saves your fingers and time. Alright, run out of 6x2 for that little bit there. It's only going to get boarded to here. So that's 16 foot right to that end. That's two 8 foot lengths. With this chipboard. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 